all right so now last two joints which are left are left join and right join so let's start with the left one the left join now as the name suggest it takes the entire data from the left table and inputs the common data later on right let's see it's not that difficult to understand let's see how it is now the example gives you the details of the table one table two and the combined data which will be reflected now as we are aware of table one and table two what data is there now as we've taken the left join and table one being the left table it'll take all the entire data of table one right and input this over here right that is the combined data will take the entire data of table 1 2 0 1 2 3 and 4 and the corresponding columns which are present in table 1 obviously will have the entire data of the rows of all the rows of table 1 right but when it comes to rest of the data parts right when it comes to let's say 202 the department manager the columns over here are present in 202 so it will be reflected over here similarly for 204 the department manager data is present so it will be reflected over here but for 201 and 203 as they are not present in table 2 hence we do not have their department and manager we can say that there will be null values over here right so this is what is left join now taking you further to right join i think we can cover it together because you know it's similar what left join does with the left table right join does with the right table it takes the entire data of the right table and then inputs the common data from both the tables for example if you look at it over here table one table two we can see that the entire all the rows of table two are taken and input over here right all the rows of table two because it's a right join and uh, it's the right join and we have taken the right all the rows of the right table which is table two over here 202 4 11 and 12 and now for this table all the data of department manager is present for all these four right so this data will automatically come over here only thing is now for age and gender only 202 and 204 are the common columns over here hence only their age and gender will be reflected over here and the rest of the values for 211 and 212 as their age and gender is not present will be reflected for as null value right so this is what a left join and right join over here let's see it in sql all right guys i'll just use the same query that we have been running right and we'll order it by customer id as well great so let me run this one okay and now here i've given inner joins i'll change that to left join over here now if i run the left join let's see what happens so it fetches me 59 rows over here that is it takes all the values of addresses now if i just look into it select address if i run this query and try and find out how many address ids are there in the table address we'll say that there are 57 rows over here right all those 57 rows along with the common one in fact i'll just make it left outer join right all those rows comes over here right all the rows comes over here and now as you can see for the left outer join that is the entire all the address all the address ids of the table address is taken over here right and uh, yeah so these are all the order ids or sorry address ids of the address table now for these address ids obviously i do not have customer id customer creation data and customer gender because this is present only with those 52 records which are there in the online customer table and hence are reflected as null over here right similarly if i reflect the same thing if i just go ahead and do the same thing for right outer join you can put in right join you can put in right outer join doesn't matter one now if i run this as you can see only 52 rows are reflected because in the online customer table only 52 address ids are present only those are taken and the corresponding values are taken now here there is no value which is present exclusively in online customer is not present in address id that is why you can see that there is no uh, row in which uh, a lot of null values are there but if had there been an address id which is only present in online customers for that I think rest of the data when it comes to city, state and country would have been missing, right? So this is how right order join and left order join works, guys. Now, as we have seen joins, we should understand which join to use when, right? So there is no question like this. There is no question like this exist. You can use any one of the join. It depends. I mean, if you want to go for only the intersection of the data, then you have to obviously use inner join. But let's say if you want to join the tables and you know how the tables are joined and how many records are reflected doesn't matter much to you. You can go for right outer join or left outer join, whichever join you want to use. For example, right outer join can be converted to a left outer join by interchanging the 
columns over here. For example, if I replace online customers with address over here from online customer OC, right outer join address A becomes actually the left outer join of this particular query over here. I hope you're getting my point. So the point is, it doesn't really matter much. It's, it's good to know that how right outer join and left join works, right? But the matter of the fact is we can use any one of the join and we can actually try it a couple of times and then once we understand okay what happens once we do this kind of thing this kind of joins i think we will be in a better position to run the queries over there the biggest advantage of join is it can give you selective data from both the tables or many tables in fact I'm, i think i've taken all the examples of only joining two tables but we can join three four five six seven as many number of tables as possible as you want right so the point is once you join this, you'll be able to look at the selective data that, you know, you want to deal with. That is the biggest advantage of joints.